frankly, the Chinese really do feel that they are, have a superior form of government than we. Um, the um, when I was serving over there, uh, Wang Jiechi, who was one of the, the top people, explained to me the, why they're superior. Why are they superior? Because um, they have a form of government which allows them to make things happen very quickly. Pointing out that uh, the last forty years, if, had they been a democracy, then they never would have grown as much as they as they have. And second, they think they have a much better process for choosing leaders. That is, their leaders are peer reviewed. Over time, someone bubbles up the top, and that's the person they select. And then they, he said, over there in your country, anybody can be president. So they do feel superior, and they're going to use this this is a House failure to elect a speaker as an example how dysfunctional America is, and it's going to really help that position themselves within the uh, within, the, for, within Chinese people. I'm curious your thoughts uh, following this visit by Vladimir Putin, who Joe Biden was talking about last night in his address to the American people, largely with regard to Ukraine. But he had uh, quite a meeting with his friend, his dear friend, as he called him, uh, President Xi in Beijing. President Xi outlining his vision of a new world order as they spent time together touting the benefits of Belt and Road and the weakness of the West. This is the backdrop for the conversation that the president had with the country last night. How worried are you about these two getting ever closer? I'm quite concerned. Um, essentially, um, all countries will pursue their own national interests. We do as Americans, mm -hmm. the Chinese do. And the Chinese are, are going to use their relationship with Russia as well as with Iran and some other countries to try to gain as much influence as they can in the world and especially appeal to the South countries, that is to the South Asian, to African and, and, and South American countries, as developing countries. They do believe that they are the leader of developing countries as opposed to developed. And they have a former government that's going to help those countries progress much more quickly than if they were, if they were, say, a Western democracy. So, um, and, and add to that, unfortunately, is, a, is the tragedy unfolding in the Mideast. Because that, that, that tragedy, combined with the visits of Putin to, um, for example, to, to Russia, as well as the Egyptian uh, president recently to Russia, to, to China, mm -hmm. really is starting to cause the world tectonic place to shift a little bit. And, it's, and we're approaching a kind of a di real deep division, on the one hand, between the United States and Western allies, uh, leading the world to the beacon of hope and democracy. On the other hand, um, uh, the, the, the group of countries led by China is appealing much more to the South countries. And it, it, un, it, it's very unfortunate. We're in a very difficult position. I don't know if we're at a tipping point, but we're in a very difficult position in the world where U.S. influence versus China's influence is going to be very important to see who's going to carry the day. And how influential is what happens in the Middle East to that ambassador? I, th I think it's um it's quite <clears throat> influential uh, because um China again appeals to the South countries, and the South countries are, have a very deep affinity uh, to the uh, Palestinians to, and other Arab countries. And let's not forget it's, it's a bit of a change of subject here, but we are here in significant respect because of decisions made by Western powers at the end of World War One at the breakup of the Ottoman Empire. At the end of World War I, when the Ottoman Empire was broken up, there were no countries in the Mideast like uh, uh, Jordan or, or Lebanon. Uh, Western powers created those company, countries and, pla and placed them right in the middle of, of Arab Middle East and Palestinians, and so, and then put Israel in the Middle East. So there's, there's the tension has been building up in the Middle East basically since the end of World War I. And it's just getting worse and worse. There's been no resolution between uh, Israel and the Palestinians. Will there be a two-state solution or not? President Xi is, act, is, is, is in China is advocating it, but it's, that's kind of still born. I don't think that's going to happen. We're in a mess. We're in a real mess. And add to that is the <laughs> form of a war that's going on in the House Republicans um, because they can't get their act together either.